There's something that creeps up on you, pops up from time to time, and keeps you awake at night. No, we're not talking about ghosts or ghouls, but something that's just as scary. If not more, yeah. really. We're talking about intrusive thoughts. And Dr. Katie Stewart is here to help uh, us eliminate those pesky feelings of worry and doubt. First, let's talk about what is an intrusive thought. Yeah. So that's actually a fantastic question, right? It seems silly, but it's an unwanted, unpleasant, maybe even disturbing thought or images fall in this category. So sometimes people will see things like, funny version would be, do you guys remember the show Scrubs? Yes. yes. And how they would, it would show them like, they have this image of like drop kicking and attending or something. Right, yeah. That kind of stuff can happen. Or like, as I was thinking about this today, I thought about holding my niece when she was a baby over mm. 20 years ago, being on concrete steps. And worry. Right. Every time. Right. Exactly. Yes. And you see it. It is mm -hmm. not a thought. It is an image of what could happen. Yep. And that's what they are. They just pop in and then maybe they pop away. Maybe they don't. Uh, same. When I had Lila, we mm -hmm. went to a Pirates game. We sat all the way up, like last row. And I was holding her and I was like, oh my god yeah. I'm, like, I'm feeling it yes. right now well and it's and we so moved. important i yeah. think so to say <laughs> this because they are thoughts like this are super common it's right. something like 94 percent of people but i was working with one of my young women who's pregnant right now and she's talking about these thoughts she's had and she's you know i think my ocd is back i think i said hold on i want to get you a number right now 98 percent of women while pregnant or postpartum experience these exact kinds of wow. thoughts. Wow. Well, that's really nice to know that you're not alone. Yeah. It would, be, it would be nice to know beforehand. So right. anybody right. who's watching, that in mind, right. write down that number. Yes. Um, how, uh, here's, here's really my question. Why do we have them? Because yes. I know at times it scares me to think that my head could right. come up with said situation. So to be honest, nobody really knows. Sometimes they just happen. Uh, obviously hormones could do it. Yeah. Um, sleep issues, stress, anxiety. Some people just have uh, inherited traits, like more of a propensity towards it. But the thing to do is know that it, doesn't mean anything about yeah, you. Right. And that's why you're disturbed by it, right? Like when people say, I can't believe I had this thought, I usually say, have you ever done anything like this? Yeah. Have you ever acted on it? And then they usually think for a minute or start to giggle and say, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now never. you can see why it's exactly. Um, I think about this much like I would a nightmare. You know, when you're laying there, you have a nightmare, and you're laying there, and you're like, it's not real, it's not real. You can go back to sleep, and yes. as soon as you close your eyes, it like creeps back in. Yes. How can we stop that? How can because that, it's kind of the same thing, right? How do you stop it when you're so deep in it? Yes. So the good news is there are a bunch of techniques. First is do nothing. That's clearly not working for you at night. Yeah, right? already doing that, Katie. Then, <laughs> then we have, just observe it. Yeah. Label it, kind of like you said about a nightmare. This is just a thought. I actually, I love to work with people that that thought's not yours. Yeah. That one just popped in, right? You didn't actively produce it. So you can say out loud or to yourself, on second thought, this one's yours. Yeah. This is how you answer it. Make it more positive, make it more reasonable. Um, if you like visualization, picture them in a bubble and see yourself popping it. Oh. Externalizing it yeah. can be really, really helpful. Write it down in a journal. According to my mother, not a great idea, not helpful to her, but a lot of people <laughs> love it. Saying it out loud. But if you think about that one, your mouth and your fingers are slower than your mind. So it automatically slows the whole thing right. down, gets it out, and helps you see it for what it is, which is usually ridiculous. Yes. Right. Then I would say probably my favorite is grounding techniques. The best one, in my opinion, is the 54321 method. So you look around you and you identify five things you can see, four things you can touch or feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. So you're working through your five senses from the mind into the body. Now everybody gets stuck on, wait, five you can what and four you can... It doesn't really matter. Does no, no, you matter. don't have to go in that order. The point is to get you away from that thought Mm -hmm. and into something else. So the more you have to think about it, the better. Great. Try to find five things you can taste. Whatever. Especially whatever, if you're not yeah. in the kitchen. Like, yeah. good luck. But it takes you out of that thought, and that's mm -hmm. what we want to do. Absolutely. And I feel like here, distraction is key, and also reminding yourself mm -hmm. that it, I love when you said it, it feels scary because it is so abnormal. Yes, it's so for you. Exactly. Yeah. So your head's trying to tell you you're a good person. Some things you that's don't have control right. of. Yeah.
really oh. interesting. Wow. The second thought is yours. Yeah. You said don't say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great stuff. Yeah. If you're interested in booking a session with Dr. Katie, we'll have more information on our website, katiekcom slash talkpittsburgh. I just feel better. You do. Of course. I do. Those intrusive, intrusive thoughts are gone Yeah, now. they're gone.